have the 2D information ready to go, we can now connect the camera solve node and solve the nodal pen shot. We're also going to see how to set up the camera solver node to solve a nodal pen shot. And that's going to take a little bit of finessing under the camera tab. So let's jump into the video and see how to do that. So now that we have the distortion figure out and the 2D information is all tracked and ready to go, we can go back to the Create tab, and under the Solving, we can take the Camera Solver and connect it to the Undistort. The distortion should be ghosted because we do have an Undistort node, and you can also notice that the focal length is being read directly from the estimate focal. So after the changes we did to the Camera tab, we can click on Solve All. But the most important thing that we need to look at is the 3D space. Within the 3D space, you'll notice that we have a camera, and let's just unselect all the trackers by none, and you'll notice that the point cloud does not represent the proper 3D space, but it represents the rotation of the CMOS chip that records throughout the whole sequence. As you can see, the camera is rotating as needed, but the residual errors are a bit high. Just to test to see if this camera solution is accurate, I can go back to my tree view, select the auto track and the user track, and I'm going to click on the copy button, and I'm going to paste. I'm going to take these brand new trackers, and I'm going to connect them straight into the footage, because I want to test to see if we get better results by calculating the distortion through the camera solver and without relying on the estimate focal. When I click on the user track that we copied from the original tree node, you'll notice that it carries all the same trackers. So right after this user track, I'm going to my solving, I'm going to select the camera solver, and I'm going to test to see if I get similar results to what I have in the original camera solver right here. And now I'm going to click on solve all again. Now we get better results. And after the camera solver, we can go back to the create, and under the utilities, we need to take the orient scene, click, drag into our tree node, and in here, under the edit mode, we're going to select the axis in order to indicate where the X and Y or X and Z should be. But in this case, it's going to be easier just to work with the X and Y. So I'm going to turn off the two horizontal viewport, going back to the one cinema view. Temporarily I'm going to turn off the ground and I'm going to turn off the Z and X displays and I'm going to take this line over here and this line to indicate where the X axis line is and we need to indicate where the second X axis line is right over here and then we can turn off the X, turn on the Y and indicate where the Y should be here and here. Going back to the two horizontal view and retrieving back our ground, you can see that now we can also indicate a origin point. So let's see which one of the origin points we can choose. So going through the footage, we see we have a lot of points here on the grass. So I'm going to take the marquee tool and select one of these points and click on set origin. Now we can switch the edit mode to rotate and refine the position of the camera and the point cloud within the 3D space. And it seems that the scene is set properly. So the next step would be to actually export the scene. Okay, so now we know how to work with the camera solver node and how to set it up to a nodal pen shot. Now we can export and go to the next shot, which is the zoom shot before we jump into Maya.